talk show an apple exclusive podcast where we talk about teeny tiny every possible information about the apple ecosystem i'm your host harshanki a marketing nerd who likes to eat breathe and survive on apple content quite literally in today's episode we are going to be talking some of the apple's biggest failures ever so hold on your horses because i know you may not like this episode since you know all of us are like apple lovers in the house but hey like who doesn't have failures in the life right but before that i want you guys to quickly hop on to your social media channels cuz i geeks blog is available across facebook instagram youtube and twitter and you might want to follow subscribe download and leave nice reviews for us on apple podcast because the i geeks blog shows available across every streaming platform of your choice if you want to connect with me or just interact about the apple ecosystem you can hit me up on instagram or clubhouse i'm available as harshanki with an extra i so moving on to today's episode see what happens is you know uh, i mean when i talk about apple's failures today and if you belong to the gen z or if you're a millennial even if you're a millennial chances are that you might not know how many bad products has apple made in the past and how has it impacted the apple ecosystem what were the amount of losses that the company had to bear for that matter when i even mention that apple has had some pretty bad products in the past it may be difficult for half of you to believe that so i thought it would be a good uh, way to educate everyone about the content and also make everyone remember that no matter how successful you are you are going to experience your failures you're going to be on the bad side of it and let's just say good things take time so i'm going to begin with the first product that is considered as one of the apple's biggest failures ever not just product wise or design wise even financially apple had to bear so much losses for that one product that steve jobs till his last days used to recalculate his decisions about launching that product in the market the product i'm talking about is apple tree a personal computer launched in the year 1980 apple tree is a product which was considered to be revolutionary according to steve jobs because apple being the design freak that it has always been was amazing when it comes to the design but on the other hand he had made a couple of adjustments to make it look like the way it was looking and that created a ruckus out there now the problem here was that apple tree was a gorgeous looking device okay but what steve jobs wanted was that he didn't want the coolers the fans to be in the device because he believed it's not classy enough for his product and they are too loud so he did not want to like play with the class appeal of his product and hence he refused to add cooling fans there now what happened is the moment the device was launched in the market people started reporting about overheating issues like the computer was being was getting heated way faster than expected that was creating a lot of problems and was due to that they were experiencing a lot of system malware as well not just that its competitor ibm had a similar product in the market which was cost efficient and with cooling fans so design failure overheating issues and cheaper competitor with a better product that led to apple tree's grand failure and if numbers are to be calculated the total amount of loss that the company had to bear in the year 1980 if i have to put it in 2021's amount it would amount to 60 million dollars that's a big chunk of money imagine how big of a loss was that back then the second product that we have in the category is macintosh that was launched in the year 1993 so now 90s was the era where people needed televisions and steve jobs wanted to convert his pc into television that is where macintosh has its charm and macintosh came into place so what happened was that um, he was coming up with the model that you could the personal computer could be converted into a television basically which was again a revolutionary product 
way ahead of its time and something that everyone wanted back in those days but the price that steve jobs placed the product for was way too expensive and people had manually started converting their personal computers to televisions macintosh was priced at worth 1500 2000 dollars which is a very high price to pay in the 90s especially if only you want to convert your personal computers to like televisions and you wouldn't want to pay a price like that when you can manually do it so why why pay such a big amount so the failure impacted the losses were so much that they had to shut down the product within just 5 months of its public release that's it and this is the 90s we're talking about this is like the beginning of the internet era that we're talking about people hardly know what internet is and imagine the news spreading a like wildfire that the product had to be that bad that the news spread like wildfire and they had to shut down the product in 5 months of its public release the next product in the category is newton Newton message pad was also launched in the year 1993 which means 1993 turned out to be a really unlucky year for Apple because two of its major releases were considered as the biggest flops ever Now Newton was a device that was supposed to be like your personal assistant because it could store contacts it could mark important dates on your calendars you could also write on it because it was like with the text recognition thingy and it could fit into your pocket it fit into your pocket just fine so this is like a personal assistant where you can take notes have your appointments written because of the calendar and a lot more things but the problem was that people did not understand how to use this device they despite of it being able to fit in your products in your pocket just fine it was considered bulky and a redundant product to be honest like jobs maybe thought that it's going to change a lot of lot of problems and come up as a ma- like an amazing solution to them but sadly people found the product redundant totally unusable and hence decided not to buy it not just that it was it crushed down jobs's hope of having a personal assistant in the market because he really wanted to enter into personalizing experiences for human kind and newton was the first product under that category so when this product failed no it hurt it hurt him real bad before i move on to the next product you know majority of apple's products the reason that they failed so miserably was that they were way ahead of its time like the world was not ready for its release Of course a lot of devices had its own technical issues and problems like that but when you think about the gadget on the whole no the idea was amazingly done like had it released probably a couple of years later or during the same years with a cheaper price then situation would have been completely different this reminds me of the next product that I'm going to talk about and that is the only gaming console that Apple ever launched The product was known as Bandai Pippin. It was launched in the year 1996. Again, a gadget way 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 ahead of its time because it allowed the players to play game online. Yeah, 1996 to play games online against each other with the help of internet. Now, this is like in the year 1996 having a product like that sounds marvelous like how can a product like this fail so badly that they had to shut down the productions forget about that the product failed i mean it sucked so much that apple never never entered back into gaming consoles two reasons first the product was priced at 599 dollars second reason the product did not really understand middle class problems or poor people problems This was a product purely made for first world people, and even then, like the first world people had these problems. Like, so when Jobs made this product, no, I mean, you call it like his sheer innocence or his lack of research. He did not realize that people are going to have internet issues. This is nineteen ninety six we're talking about, and 
imagine the speed back then used to be in kbps per minute even lower than that right how can you possibly play a game online with your friends with that kind of internet speed and steve jobs be being the white guy that he was he really did not understand that this is going to be a genuine problem and came out with a product like that in the market you know sometimes i just wonder that i should just be giving information to you guys this is the year 1996 we're talking about and this was the time i'm going to let you ponder over it well was the year 1996 the return of steve jobs did he was he back into apple in the year 1996 if not then who was the person involved behind making of this product i'm going to let you google and find out the answer to this because hey this should be like a two way communication right out should be expecting some exciting approaches and answers from your end as well the next product that we have in our lineup is 20th anniversary mac launched in the year 1997 this product was priced for 5500 dollars back then way 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 more expensive for personal computer for the 90s imagine paying 5500 dollars for a, a personal computer back then even half of us wouldn't be able to afford a 5500 dollars like even today forget about affording it in the past that is not an ideal price even like in the year 2021 the 1997 5500 dollars for that need i say more but since it was the 20th anniversary edition it was there in the market the design was amazing and apple has still stuck to the vertical designing in the current imax they have loved the design and the concept so much other than that there was nothing much good about the product and due to its exorbitant amount of money you had to pay to get the product it was discontinued within a year of its launch also another reason can be that since it was an anniversary launch it was only supposed to be in, a, in the market for a year who knows but yeah if i were in 90s i wouldn't really pay that amount of money for what you can possibly use a laptop that expensive uh, a personal computer that expensive we gen z's have a problem don't we like we have almost forgotten about personal computers I guess I've never sat on the PC unless I have to do some editing work or something like that. I've never sat on the PC since I left my school days. You know, back in the school days, we used to have uh, the computer labs, and used to really enjoy going to the computer labs. We used to wait for our PC to come. We used to customize the the home screen of our PC and the angles and things like that. Yeah, those were the days of personal computers. Today is the day of personal laptops. So. the word pc itself is do it makes me nostalgic it's still hard to digest that oh okay <laughs> wow they were talking about a product that old like shit okay moving on to the next product i'm going to be talking about a mouse that the company launched in the year 1998 and this was a usb mouse it was known as hockey it was known as hockey bug because it was designed in such a way and the mouse was imagine working with the cookie in your hand like a large size cookie in your hand and like scrolling and doing like it's just how do you like how do you how do you do that now the apple has always been like very keen on design and people fail to understand why apple made such a big mistake but needless to say the device was discontinued super flawed super super flawed and super flop as well Moving on to the next product, iPod Shuffle. iPod Shuffle was launched in the year two thousand and nine. Now, you know Apple sometimes it just believes that the product is going to work because it is an Apple product, but it doesn't happen like that. On the contrary, a lot of problems come up, and iPod Shuffle, iPod Shuffle was one of them products because what happened was that it did not have any buttons, like no buttons at all whatsoever. and because of that you had to learn a lot of uh, functionalities 
to have the device running like double click for forwarding and then pause for hold for six seconds to do something and things like that and these were a load of instructions for people who just wanted to listen to music and nothing else although it may have been like too good to be true initially or for the team sitting there because no buttons at all how cool is that but then you need to understand if it's no buttons, it's not touch screen as well, which means you have to press like a lot of things at a lot of time to generate the output necessary. And that, my friends, created a huge problem. So like, this is why it was a very flop product. Although a lot of people I know have really appreciated iPod Shuffle, but if I were to call myself a user, I really don't think I'd be using it. I wouldn't. No, that's just not happening. The last failure and one of the biggest fiascos that Apple has ever done, I've talked about this in the Apple Controversies episode as well, was coming up with the compulsory U2 single. Now what happened back then was, uh, call it a marketing strategy for U2, when they launched their song, they gave to every iTunes user in the world, everyone, as a gift. 500 million users was the amount and Apple just gave it to everyone there. Everyone, like. Now, people started complaining about it because A, it was invasion of privacy. B, it was something that they did not want and was forcibly given to them. And C, why would someone try to, like, even promote their song like that. If you have to give it, you cannot force someone to listen to a particular kind of music, right? Even if you were to market the song and were coming up with some kick-ass guerrilla marketing strategy, then the least you could have done up was given them an option to either download it or not and offer it to them as a free product. That would have been a better product placement rather than just putting it in everyone's phones forcibly. Now that gave Apple a lot of backlash, a lot of complaints came up and it created a lot of problems for them. So much that Apple had to issue a public apology and guide everyone as to how to remove the product. That were the repercussions so bad. Now this was the last product or service that I had in my mind that was like a major, major failure and embarrassment on Apple's and of course there are a lot of more products as e for instance, Again, a personal assistant replacement sort of a product. You have to Google it and know more about it. But these didn't work out. On the other hand, Gen Z's may not know like products like this even existed or how did they function? Are they still there? Yes, they are still there. A lot of Apple geeks have these, these gadgets with them stored somewhere safe just as a memory. So you can always look around and I guess there must be certain museums like yours from now you'll see these products. But they performed so miserably and the company had to incur such huge losses that they had to be discontinued. Now here's a lesson for you. You cannot just expect to have a successful product or service in the market if you're not prepared for the failures to come. Like every part of your life is a gamble or is a stock trade. Where if you do not have, if you do not take enough risk, you're not getting enough profits. And if you're taking enough risk, then the chances are you might face bigger losses as well. So you have to be prepared for both of it. Make sure you don't give up and eventually you'll succeed. Now look at Apple today in 2021 and name one area where Apple is not trying to put it hands on. Or is not excelling. Apart from making like teeny tiny flaws. Agreed that the AirPods Max cases were bad. Did it stop you from buying AirPods Max? No. Did it stop AirPods Max from being one of the best noise cancellation headphones that we have ever seen? Hell no. So this is what Apple has gotten itself into as a team after embracing the flawed products, the flawed products and moving in a positive direction. All right, that brings me to the end of the episode. I hope you liked the episode and there are a lot more products that we may have a clash of opinions upon. So don't forget to connect with us on our social media channels. The iGeeks blog is available across Instagram, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. And if you want to stay connected to the podcast, then you have to subscribe, like, download, follow or maybe leave nice reviews on Apple Podcasts because the iGeeks blog show 
is available across every streaming platform of your choice. If you want to interact with me about the Apple ecosystem, you can always connect with me on Instagram or hit me up on Clubhouse. I'm available as Harshanki with an extra I. I'm going to see you next week with some pretty exciting content, maybe a new product or gadget review or who knows, a conspiracy theory. Till then, make sure you have your mask on all the time. Stay hydrated, get vaccinated, only step out of the house if it's needed and take good care of yourself. I'm Harshanki signing off. Stay safe, stay connected and I'll see you next week.